People aren't using their landlines in their homes anymore. And there are so many things we do now, remotely, on the move, untethered. It's really quite extraordinary. What makes uh, a human being a human being, among other things, is the ability to communicate. Wherever you travel, wherever you go, the expectation that you are connected. It's changing the way we live our lives, the way we communicate, the way we have friendships, the way we get our job done. And Immosat is part of that. Rupert Pierce is the CEO of satellite communications company Inmarsat, a company with a compelling vision of the future. A future in which we're all connected, everywhere. Inmarsat has been a leader, in fact the leader in mobile satellite communications for more than 35 years. We were founded all those years ago by 86 countries who signed a convention on safety of life at sea. And that, for the first time, began to use satellite technology in a unique way for things that moved. So that was the genesis of Inmarsat. So we can deal with ships in the oceans, we can now deal with aircraft flying at over 600 miles an hour. And of course, if you can do that, you can also deliver services on the ground as well. Inmarsat's global communications coverage provides voice and data links using a network of satellites 35,000 kilometers above the Earth in geostationary orbit. Their services underpin industries and endeavors that require highly reliable connectivity in the remotest places and the toughest conditions. What Inmarsat have created is an internet of everywhere. We have that culture of taking it forward. When you want to provide a data service, a voice service in the middle of the Pacific, in the middle of the Sahara, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, whatever that may be, uh, y you need to stretch that space technology. The next big stretch for Inmarsat is one that could transform the business and change the way we live our lives. Michele Franci is Inmarsat's chief technology officer and the man responsible for building the next generation of high-speed satellite broadband. It's a project bringing together experts all over the world, taking years of preparation and $1.6 billion of investment by Inmarsat. The new network is called Global Express. So GX is actually about giving easy, thoughtless, seamless uh, access to broadband quality communications wherever you are to professional or individual users, to uh, passengers on a ship, to crew members on a ship, to passengers on an airplane, to journalists in the field, to service men and women in, in the armies and the navies of the world. To achieve seamless coverage, Global Express uses three state-of-the-art Inmarsat-5 satellites, placed 35,000 kilometers from Earth, each covering a region of the planet at higher speeds than ever before. Global Express is a revolution for Enmosat and for our customers. For the last 35 years, we've been working in the L-band, but there isn't enough bandwidth there for us to be able to deliver really high throughput, high capacity services. We looked at what we had on L-band, and we saw that we're reaching its limits in many aspects. So we've moved strategically into a complementary band, the KA band. The most important thing about KA band is it allows us to deliver very, very high levels of throughput. We needed to go to another band. We need to do something different. Global Express was an incredibly brave decision by the board, which was to rip up the playbook, start again. But Inmarsat couldn't do it alone. To design and build the Inmarsat 5 satellites for the backbone for the GX network, Inmarsat chose air and defense manufacturers Boeing. Network experts iDirect would provide new technologies to drive the mobile terminals and globe-spanning ground network, while IT giant Cisco came on board to create a new delivery platform for services and applications. A project on a massive scale to enable humanity to live more connected lives, wherever they choose. We, we all have this compelling need of exchanging 
of, of exchanging services, thoughts, uh, goods. What makes uh, a human being a human being, uh, among other things, is the ability to communicate. And it's because we all have this compelling need that the world moves on and, and we have developed all the wonderful things that we have in the history of humanity. Landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. We, we used to communicate to people that were in the same village as us and then in the same region, and then we went further and further. We, we started having uh, explorers taking uh, ships and, and, and sailing the oceans to see what was at the other end of it, and then we, we had airplanes. There was a time when writing a letter was enough, but today's world is a world where uh, we cannot afford that speed or lack thereof. The big shift that we are assisting in the telecommunications world is everything that you can possibly think of in a mobile environment, in a world where people move all the time. That sort of puts us in a pole position, which doesn't necessarily mean you'll win the race, but it does make it easier than if you start from the last row. So this is part of our lab. This is the GX uh, uh, rack, where we have recreated a mini test bed for us. So typically what you have here, for example, are the iDirect home modules, which is, represents what's in our terminals. Wen Wong has been at Inmarsat for over 20 years. As the man running the engineering team on GX, Xuen's daunting task is to make this incredibly complicated operation run smoothly. You know, it's just like the analogy is that a swan is sort of gliding across the lake and we're busy pedaling underneath. Um, at each stage, there are challenges, but we knew that we did the right thing and through hard work and experience, we've, we've got there. But I think for most of the, uh, for most of the team, is the excitement of getting to, to there that keeps us going. It's been a very busy time at Inmarsat over the last 10 years, but of all those things, clearly the most transformational uh, event in my Inmarsat lifetime is Global Express. There's, there's absolutely no question about that. The coming months will be a key time for Inmarsat as they launch the third satellite in the I-5 Global Express constellation and bring the global network into commercial operation. We know GX does what we hope it will do. We look outside into the markets that we serve and we see that Global Express is still, five years from its genesis, is still revolutionary. It's still what people want. It, it, it will be still a lot of challenges ahead of us, but exciting times. In Churchillian terms, this is just the end of the beginning. This is a chance for us to be at the forefront of our industry for a generation or more. In the next film, we'll be following the story of the i5 F3 launch and exploring a concept that will change the way we live, work and travel. The internet of everywhere. You spend years making the business case, procuring, designing, manufacturing, testing, creating the ground segment, putting the antennas in place, the air communications network, making sure that the satellite is right. You do all that and you put it on top of a rocket that is essentially very solid 70s technology. But it is a glorified intercontinental ballistic missile with solid boosters. The trick with solid boosters is that you just light that fuse and then it goes. You know, we are almost there. When you can see the finishing line, you get that anxiety. Butterflies in your stomach.